woman is an assassin. She is an assassin. Valentina Shevchenko, welcome back to BT Sport. How are you? Doing amazing. Great, thank you. I've got the big question that I want to ask you. Did the newly crowned pilot of your family fly the whole squad into Las Vegas? Your sister's obviously just be <laughs> become a pilot. We, not, we, uh, she's not so newly, cr uh, newly last year, crowned. Last year. Yeah, uh, because now she has 1,000 hours of uh, flying and she is working in the uh, trade wind company as a pilot yep. and she's flying uh, all islands around the Puerto Rico. Did she not fly the Shevchenko team into Las Vegas for, for, the, for this trip? <laughs> very long, very long flight. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, we're going to talk about the fight that's coming up this weekend with uh, Alexa, but I want to talk about obviously not seeing you in the octagon last year. Did you, did you find only having one trip uh, to the UFC last year frustrating because we have used to seeing you so many times? Obviously, you fought twice a year. Uh, consistently. Did you find last year frustrating from a competition point of view? Uh, you know, actually I was ready. I was ready and I um, really wanted to fight like by the end of the year, like last year, 2022. Um, it just didn't work. Uh, I think the um, like promotion has their own schedule or something yeah. like that. Uh, so, but um, kind of like if things are not working, you're not going to sit there and just feeling like I'm so frustrated or something like that. No, I was able to find like a amazing things to do and actually um, when you are in trainings and a lot of trainings you don't have much time for certain things and I were able to um, accomplish uh, some travels what I wanted to do for a long time and I'm very happy about that. The, the, listen, I, I'm, I'm aware that obviously you spend a little bit of time in Asia, part of this camp as well out in Tokyo, I want to get to that, but on those travels, I mean we kind of take for granted obviously you're, you've been a mixed martial artist all your life doing this professionally, consistently in camps, defending belts. Was it nice to have a little bit of time for you <laughs> to, go and to go and enjoy the things that you, do, that you enjoy away from the octagon as well? Oh yes, it was, but um, uh, it's kind of like for me, um, it doesn't matter if I am in a training camp or not, I still kind of like training all the time. And for me, it's um, just being in shape um, uh, in case of they needed me. The phone call comes or <laughs> yeah. something like that. Yeah. But yes, definitely it was very nice because um, kind of like um, I went back to Kyrgyzstan yeah. and uh, this year, last year, I spent uh, very good quality time with my family and friends uh, because I could not travel there for 11 years. Um, yeah, so many like fights and works and everything. So I just enjoy my time is there and I visited some places, for example, with, um, be growing up we kind of like travel from capital to the lake. We have one of the beautiful lakes like uh, uh, in the world. It's called Isiku Lake. And uh, usually it's kind of like from one point to point, one another point. But this time we took a trip around the whole lake. And it, take, uh, it took about uh, three weeks. And the lake is huge. It's, uh, one that's, that's not a lake, that's an ocean. It's 160 <laughs> kilometers, about 100 miles lands. Wow. Yeah, so it's a big lake. And we just just uh, was driving without any purpose, just stopping in this little village Beautiful. and see like people live and like, it, it was amazing. What was it like going back home after all that time? Because obviously in that period of time, you have become who you are now, the superstar that we all, we all know. What was that like receiving that love and adoration from, from people back home? Uh, it was amazing and it's kind of like uh, the things what um, people asking about motivation. This is kind of like uh, where I get <laughs> my motivation to continue represent my country, my nature, um, uh, my people, uh, my na uh, um, and like uh, everything what I represent in my martial arts career. So it was uh, so uh, exciting to see all of them and especially like friends, family uh, after a long time. It's amazing. It's, it's you, again, you're just yourself talking about motivation there. Is that the key thing for you now, trying to inspire the next generation to follow you? Because it's been 10 years now, female fighting in the UFC, the development over that 10 year period since obviously Ronda shot onto the scene has been crazy. You're obviously now one of the poster people of, of the UFC, inspiring the next generation of what it's gonna be like in another 10 years from now. Oh, uh, for me it's amazing and it's kind of like seeing that um, any person 
only could wish if uh, like somewhere in another part of the world little girl or boy can be a, like you can be as a motivation for them to do the things what you are doing right now it's kind of like the best feeling what you can feel and it's very nice to feel that and um, yeah from my perspective i just continue um, um, to live the life what i think is the right things not because someone uh, saying you have to do like that yeah. or you have to uh, treat people like that or you have to uh, say things because they are thinking it's good no i just want to mm, like people asking a lot like how you want to be remembered or something like that i don't think about that but i just want to live my life the way i think is right and to have this um like how it's a um Mm, um values yeah like family friends yeah. here yeah, 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 and uh, like if you give a word you have to like fill Honor out that. your Honor that. Yeah. yes exactly because i feel in the modern world people start to lose in this feeling a little bit and i think it's very important to um, remember your roots and from generation to generation give it to the um like um younger people too You've obviously been taught well growing up, haven't you? I know that, I know that you've got family members with you on, on this particular trip as well. You've obviously got a thirst for knowledge as well. I mean, what, someone like yourself who is the champion, been a champion for a long period of time, outsiders can look in at that and think, she kn- she's got the game, she knows everything. She knows everything about this game, but you have a thirst for knowledge, constantly pushing yourself to want to go and le- learn new things. Is that why you spent some time at this camp in, in Tokyo to learn different aspects of, of martial arts out there? Mm, uh, if you're speaking exactly about Tokyo, more, more it was because of um, I had a lot of interest about this country. Because uh, growing up, I competed in um, many Japanese uh, martial arts, yes. judo, karate, and um, see um, how I said motherland <laughs> right of the martial arts yeah. um, because because of this kind of like in the countries like Kyrgyzstan Kazakhstan like all these like uh, um, countries because of this sport for example karate, karate when it was underground karate form from this sport form MMA and it's kind of like was uh, a base yeah. for the MMA what we are uh, looking at right now and it was every time I wanted to visit uh, Japan because of that and uh, it's not because of something new but to see the uh, beginning of everything so it was in a way like going home kind of Is it, did it feel like it, it was a natural thing for you to do because obviously this is your life mixed martial arts is your life you've been around it all your life but going to the motherland of where you <laughs> believed that it actually begun was that, what, what was that feeling like for you in the, for you to visit Tokyo to spend time mm-hmm. with people that are obviously out there doing what you're doing um, for me it was I found a lot of things in common for example uh, between Kyrgyzstan and, and Japan uh, the way of the cultural things the way how they approach to um, in terms of respect people is respect each other yeah. treat uh, each other and I was like just recently was speaking about that um, in Kyrgyzstan we use uh, two forms of uh, polite approach to a, pe- a person you when you are speaking with your friends or someone who you know okay. pretty well and uh, we it's kind of like um, when you approach to someone older and it's kind of like a ranking yes and in same in Japan for example I w- was I was um, um, growing up uh, I <laughs> I learned I teach like w- what my mother said you can you never can say like to the older people no matter how old they are it doesn't matter that uh, it doesn't mean they have to be uh, older than you 10 20 pi- no it's just like different two years enough and you will also like always say this polite version because I kind of like teach this uh, distance you show your respect you show your uh, that you are treat these people good this person good and this is what I found in Japan as well and I'm very happy that uh, mm, countries like that keep their traditions that from generation to generation that give it to uh, their um, like children I think it's very important because if you starting to uh, forget about the traditions it's uh, the way to nowhere did you enjoy the sightseeing as well as obviously learning 
culture and spending time with people? Did you get get around the island? I had. I had some pretty good time. Definitely because of training, I could not spend um, like a long, ta- a long time like on tra- traveling. But all around Tokyo, um, uh, for me, it's every time bites of water parks or like uh, shores you love the water don't yeah. you? you love it <laughs> i love i i love to stay by the water and yeah we, uh, it was amazing and exactly uh the uh, time it was pretty close for the blooming the uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sakura blooming and it was partially already or all, all, everything with the flowers beautiful. so it's just beautiful Sounds sounds fantastic. <laughs> sounds, you'll, have, you'll have to go back when you're not in camp, so you can enjoy e- oh, e- yes. e- even more. Even this more. is a plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, speeding ahead to this weekend, UFC 285 against uh, Alexa. We listen. You are the UFC's longest reigning champion. Seven defenses at the moment. Mm. That belt is missing one ruby. Are you are you are you conscious of records and things like that on on this current reign? That, you, that you're on in the UFC? <clears throat> For me, it's not about the numbers. It's not about the names. It's not, not about the something like, the, uh, like accomplishment or something like that. It's all about my performance. I think if I perform good and do everything to win the fight, this is enough. Everything gonna come by itself and join like everything. So um, I never gonna put in my head uh, these like thoughts about uh, one more and more and more. No, it's yes, the most important to um, performance to show beautiful art of martial arts. With that in mind, where do you think then, after Alexa and various challenges, where are the challenges for you over the next two years? <laughs> do you think in mix in in martial arts specifically within the UFC for you to express that beautiful art? Mm, I take everything one at a time. For me, number one, it's Alexa this Saturday. And after I pass this uh, challenge, I will think about the next step. What do you make then of the young challengers that are coming up in, in your division? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's nice. It's amazing to see uh, like new blood, new air <laughs> in the division, and it's uh, definitely it's uh, for me as a champion. It's kind of like uh, very cool to see uh, that young they are coming, they are going in and out, but you are still here and you are still champion. Do you think they're ready for Valentina Shevchenko? They are not. <laughs> I love that answer. I love that answer. <laughs> what about from your point of view of? I don't know, other weight divisions or champions from other weight divisions. Does that excite you? No, this, there is still one more <laughs> fight that is left and people continuously like uh, speak about that fight trilogy with Amanda. And I think it's, um, it's definitely have to happen. Does the situation, the way that that finished the second fight, is that one that you've got to get back? Does that, does that bother you at all? Or, or is it something that you've that you've put to peace? Oh no, it doesn't bother me uh, at all because I know I won that fight. Yeah, it definitely it's kind of like in the records it's go different way. But uh, me, after watching, re-watching this fight, I know exactly it was a uh, fight that I won. And yeah, um, I already like passed, I move on on that. I had like all different like uh, careers since that fight. And uh, this is only what people want to see. The fans want what want to see question I've, I've never we've never been in this situation before when you complete the rubies on the belt do you get a new belt there is other plate on the other side oh, so you've got to go around, <laughs> the, you've got to go around the other side as well okay that's, well, that's, for me as a fan that's good to hear so that means that you've got to complete the other side of the belt before you, you're allowed to uh, no longer do uh, martial arts tell me how this fight plays out at the weekend with Alexa Grasso? Uh, there is one, only one like outcome of this fight. Uh, I will I will do everything what I have to do to win the fight. Uh, doesn't matter what I have to do, where the fight gonna go, striking, grapple, wrestling, I will find uh, and I will dominate every single situation. So the victory is gonna be mine. I train very hard for this fight. I feel strong, powerful, confident, and I will show it on Saturday. And then the celebration dance? Of course. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, Valentina, thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the rest of Fight Week, and we're looking forward to seeing you do your thing on Saturday night. Thank you so much.